it's Tim with UTV Excursion in Review. Today we're going on a ride with some friends of ours, Ken and Susan, here in Scipio, Utah. We're going to leave right here alongside the 15 freeway and uh, it's about a one hour ride. We won't bore you with the whole one hour. We'll try to do the highlight thing. We'll have Ken probably narrate a little bit. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a ride that we took in Scipio, Utah uh, back in May of 2019. It was a beautiful day. They just had some snow in the area. And uh, we're on a, a road that's called 8 Mile. It's uh, pretty easy to find from town. Scipio is a little farming community that's on the I-15. It's on uh, mile marker 188. And uh, this particular trail, you just take the frontage road out of town it, it parallels the freeway for several miles uh, just after you crest the top of the hill there's an underpass with a, with a signage that directs you right to 8 mile trail and uh, it was a gorgeous day for driving we saw quite a few uh, you know a lot of beautiful scenery and we also had the opportunity to do a lot of creek crossings, which uh, water was flowing quite a while or quite a bit in, at that time. I don't think it was, it's a creek that runs year round necessarily, but the water was up and it was a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. A lot of the scenery is pretty much the same, it's just uh, beautiful cedars and uh, just a nice day for driving. We're coming to our first water crossing. Now, I hadn't been in this area in a lot of years, so it was kind of a just an exploratory type of a trip. At this point you have the option of going right, which will lead you right back out toward the freeway, uh, or left, we stayed to the left and that took us on a lot more of the, uh, this trail system which actually surprisingly crossed the, the uh, creek probably about uh, 12 times or so. Uh, we took this road out quite a ways up until it dead ended and then uh, came back around and, and had actually quite a good time following it all the way back. Now we're coming up to about the third or fourth water crossing that we had, and some of these got to be pretty far across. There's uh, one a little further in that's quite a bit wider than this, but uh, like I said, the water was rushing real well. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was just you know, deep enough to make it interesting, but not too deep to make it dangerous or scary. But uh, we actually went along this road quite a ways and you could at different points see the water running right alongside. So we were just paralleling the creek and, and hopping back and forth over it. It was quite a bit of fun.
right in this area you can really see the creek running over on our right and we followed it this way for quite a little ways. Now we're approaching the widest water crossing that, I, that we encountered on this trip and it was a little bit weird because at this point I can see that it's quite a ways across. I know it's real shallow on this end but I have no idea how deep it is on the other end. I can see that it's definitely deeper than this. But figured we'd give it a shot and you know, it wasn't really any deeper than the rest of it but it was still kind of a a lot, of, a lot more interesting crossing than what some of the others were. Especially right about here. And you can still see it flowing right beside the, the road as we kept driving. We went probably another mile or two uh, up this road until we got to a point where the forest service had blocked it off and, and uh, we had to turn around but the nice thing about that was we got to do it all over again.
Now we're approaching the end of the road. This is the area where we had to turn it back around. And on the way back out, the only thing we did differently is when we came to the first water crossing, instead of crossing back over, I stayed to my left. And that put us on the other half of the loop, which took us back out toward the freeway, but it was actually a much nicer ride than the way in that we had taken.